Hi there, HK, and this is Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of the lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT, and from OTC, OnlineTOEFLCourse.com, and man, are you working really hard. Every day, you're doing a speaking and a writing practice test, and when you're doing the writing, you're writing 500 words a day. You've been doing this for the last 30 days. Do you have any idea how many words that is? That's like 15,000 words. I mean, you, you practically have written a book already just by doing your TOEFL writing practice. And what does that tell you about writing? You're only going to get better if you practice the skill. It isn't watching a bunch of videos. It's actually writing and writing and more writing. And that's exactly what you've been doing. Okay, so this one, we're stuck at about 4.0 out of 5, 25 points out of 30, right? So I want to help you a little bit. I think that your paragraphs are very developed. You have a great thesis. Topic sentences are clearly framed. But you just sometimes have these little errors in there. So let's work on this paragraph and pay attention to the errors you're making. To begin with, if students work in the group, I'm going to put a comma to separate that introductory clause from the main part of the sentence, then they can be, you want to make this plural because they, they can be experts in problem solving, which will result in finishing the project on time. For example, my nephew's teacher gave him a project on, I'm going to just put on infection control in the hospital and preferred him to do it by himself without help of other classmates. Furthermore, tried to complete the project by himself, but still, I'm going to put here was lacking in some areas, such as uh, secondary infection in the hospital. I don't know, you need to say something about getting enough research about secondary infections in the hospital maybe so it seems like you were missing something there consequently he approached his friend from his neighbor to solve that problem additionally the friend involved another friend from the hospital so they could work together to get the solution all of them and you don't want to separate your subject from its verb with a comma that's a big no-no right all of them went to the hospital to experience real-life situations at medical, surgical floor and procedural rooms. I'm going to end the sentence right here. It's a little awkward how you did it. Also, they, how about these diligent students? These diligent students check the documents made sure that I don't know this is where you're running into trouble. The medical professionals maybe these diligent students made sure that the medical professionals checked the documents with permission to analyze their data finally he was able to finish his project before the deadline let's just put only with the help of his friends and this is a little bit less formal to do let me give you more formal transition word Therefore, it is easier to solve this problem in that way instead of working. Thus, it, I'm going to put, was easier for my nephew, right? It was easier for my nephew to solve the problem in that way instead of only working, I would say only working on his own. Let's just say that.
Okay, so as you can see when I was going through here, I do have to make a few changes. So be careful of your sentence structure. Make sure you're not missing any needed words. Make sure that you're exactly explaining your ideas and you're filling in all the necessary things that we might not understand about what you're saying. So uh, I didn't quite get 100% of everything that you're saying in this paragraph, but still, I mean, look at this example. Anybody watching at YouTube, this is what you want to remember. This student spent 159 words on one example. Most of you, you just talk about things in a general sense. You're not very specific at all. You go and take the TOEFL test. You're like, why did I get 3.0? Well, you're not having any examples. That's why you're getting 3.0. So look at this, look at this. This is a very, very well-developed paragraph. You've, you've always been doing well in that area, HK. So the main thing is you gotta get a little bit better control over your sentence structure. And I think it's very possible you could get a perfect score on the writing section. So now let's take a look at the speaking practice test you sent me, if I'm not already busy enough, right? But it's okay, uh, because the joy I'm going to have when you tell me your TOEFL score the next time, you're going to say, Michael, I got 106. Uh, I got 28 on the writing. I got 27 on the speaking or whatever. To me, that's worth it. So I've enjoyed working with you over the last month or so. So it really inspires me to see somebody who can work this hard toward a goal. Exactly what you're doing. The independent speaking task that you're answering right now, I'm looking at your email right now. So do you think that eating healthy food is easier or more difficult today than it was 40 or 50 years ago? Use examples and details to support your answer. Let's listen to the practice test uh, one time first without any comments. Then I'll give you my first impressions. Then we'll listen to it again a second time. All right, here we go. Nowadays, it is easier to eat healthy food because people are health conscious. To begin with, my sister always... I would say people are more health conscious. Remember, you're comparing eating healthy food today to eating healthy food 40 or 50 years ago. So to make that comparison, I would say they're more health conscious. Let's try to eat healthy food because she does not want to gain a weight. To begin with, she created a diet plan for her so that she could track on her diet in a day and avoid the extra calories. Thus, she uh, tried to eat uh, fruit salad in the morning and uh, vegetable and uh, salad in the evening and uh, afternoon and avoided the uh, extra calorie foods. Therefore, she did not gain weight as she was eating healthy food. Okay, good example, but, but w why does this mean that people are more health conscious? compared to 40 or 50 years ago? Are they more health conscious because there's more education on the importance of uh, eating healthily? You see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm not quite sure if you really made the argument in this thing. So you say yes, people are more healthy today or eating more healthily today than they did 40 to 60 years ago. But then give me reasons why. If you just give one example of, of someone but we can't just say, okay, this one example represents everybody else in the in society. So maybe there's more information available on the internet about eating healthily, or it's easier to buy healthy food at supermarkets, or there's better education in the schools and the elementary, secondary, and colleges regarding eating healthily now than there was 40 or 50 years ago. Therefore, because of these reasons, two and three, it's uh, easier to eat healthy food today, more easier or easier to eat healthy food today than in the past. So I don't think you're gonna cut it on this one. Uh, let me take a look at the rubrics here just for a minute. Looking at the rubrics, I think you're going to run into some trouble with uh, the topic development. So the response is sustained and conveys relevant information required by the task. That's where you're getting killed on this. 
right? I don't think you had enough relevant information to, to explain why people are eating more healthily today compared to the past. I don't think that you really made that argument clear. That's where I'm running into trouble. So I think it's a topic development thing. Let's listen again. Nowadays, it is easier to eat healthy food because people are health conscious. To begin with, my sister always try to eat healthy food because... My sister always tries. Don't forget to make that third person S ending there. Because she does not want to gain her weight. To begin with... But why is she health conscious? Is she educated? Uh, did she... Did she uh, learn some things on the internet? She created a diet plan for her so that she could track on her diet in a day. Now, how did she create this diet plan? Did she consult with a dietitian? Did she find some readily available information on the internet? And avoid the extra calories. Thus, she uh, tried to eat uh, fruit salad in the morning. Thus, I would say she tries to eat. So, I would... I would use the simple present tense there to talk about a recurring habit or action. It's not just something happening in the past. This is something that your sister does regularly. It's an ongoing activity. So the simple present can be used to talk about ongoing activity. And uh, vegetable and uh, salad in the evening and uh, afternoon and avoided the uh, extra calorie foods. Therefore, she did not gain weight as she was eating healthy food. I would say, therefore, she has not gained as much weight because she's eating healthy food. But again, how does that relate to people being more health conscious? So, I got trouble with this one. So, I'm going to say 2.5 out of 4. I'm going to put you at maybe 17 to 18 points out of 30. I don't think that you really clearly addressed the speaking task on this one. That's why I'm giving you the score that I did. All right, so uh, the one thing you want to remember is rule number one, read and decode the speaking task and then make sure that whatever you do fulfills the demands of that task.